Would you like to be somebody who understands the fundamental natural law of tick and talk? <laughs> then listen to the end of this video where I explain how when you hear the tick, you can anticipate the talk and the talk will follow with 100% certainty. And what other examples in life can be represented by this tick and talk uh, heuristic? So before we get into this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to learn more about self-development, dating, Jungian psychology, and how to reduce suffering in life. Let's get into it. So I was recently watching, watching a lecture by Richard Streer, who's a professor on the poem Paradise Lost. And a part of Paradise Lost has to or revolves around the concept of time. Now, he talked about when you hear the sound of a clock go tick and tock. When you hear the tick, the tock always follows. Now, there are two key takeaways for me by, from that concept. When you hear the tick, the tock will follow with certainty. What other things in life do you know with certainty after you have observed something occur? Like if A happens, you know that B will happen. And I think what we're talking about here is not a cause and effect relationship. So for example, if A happens and then B follows, it is not because it is a consequence of A. It is something else. It's more like it's a logical sequence. Like if you look at, think of a clock, you have the dials going around, but in the middle you have the, the actual, how do you say, machine, the actual engine in some sense that is going it. And that is causing the, the, the dials to move. It is not that one dial moves and it like pushes it over to the, you know, again, as a consequence of moving. No, the, the, the dial is moved because the machine moves it. So it is simply a sequence. The tick and the tock are simply sequences, not cause and effect relationships. So when A occurs, B will follow. And you can portray this with the sort of example of a pendulum. A pendulum is like, you know when you hold a, a, like a piece of string and a weight at the bottom and you pull it over to one side and let go, it'll swing over to the other side and swing back and swing back like this. That's a pendulum and it swings. So life is always in movement. And it has specific directions. Like if you go in one direction, you're focusing one thing, you're moving in a specific direction. Now, does the pendulum need to swing back again to balance the energy of moving in direction A? Let's say you want to start a career in banking. Does the energy you're investing, no, no, no. Let's say you're starting a career, you're building a startup. Does the energy you're, you invest in the startup backfire eventually because you're moving in one direction but does it need to be balanced out the tick is the direction and the tock is the pendulum swinging back again so the pendulum always oscillates between left and right it's essentially always in balance there's something with balance going on here but we have the power this is where it gets interesting we have the power to hold on to the pendulum swinging when it swings to one side and we can hold on to it, especially because we might like the side it has swung to. And we don't want to let go. Now, what happens if you hold on to the pendulum swinging? I think the structure that holds the pendulum up loses its balance that it was holding on to and that was holding the pendulum in place. Because if you have a pendulum, let's say you build a, a like a, a, a wooden post, like a, a wooden sort of uh, upside down L. You have like the wooden post out here and here you, hold, uh, you tie the rope and then here you have the pendulum swinging forwards and backwards. Conceptually, sort of in, in abstract terms, not in physical terms, the structure of the, the, the post, the wooden post, is held in place by the moving left and right, forwards and backwards. It kind of like keeps it in balance. If it were to swing to one side and not back, 
it would pull the post down and the post would tip and lose balance. When you hold on to the pendulum on one side, the structure that's holding the pendulum up tips and collapses. The pendulum shall swing no more and it must be rebuilt. And I think that is relevant for society. When, for example, political, extreme political directions gain power. So you have the pendulum swinging far onto one side and it stays there for too long, the system collapses, something like that. And you need to think of it a bit like a tight, with a balancing, like a tight rope walker. Wait, tight? Tight rope walker? Yeah, you, know, you know when people sort of balance on a, on a rope and you know, walk across this like really high fall, they often have this pole that keeps them, helps them keep balance. You know, they hold it in balance. But you know, if they tip it to one side, then they're gonna fall off. They need to keep it in balance. Left and right needs to be equal in order to stay on the rope and survive. And the same thing goes for, I think, almost anything in life. The pendulum must swing left to right and be in balance or else the thing tips or else you, 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 you fall over. Now, what are some examples of the tick and the tock, the left and the right, the pendulum swinging? I think it is, you can essentially replace the tick and tock with all opposites, happy and sad, for example. If something makes you extremely happy, you can guarantee you'll be sad again afterwards. Now, not necessarily because you become sad afterwards, but the decline from this peak of happiness down to, let's say, a normal level of mindset, of, you know, of, of emotions, that decline com in comparison to the previous peak, that creates sadness. It is, and that's the pendulum swinging back again. And also, this concept I've talked about with people recently is, and it's, I've talked, th thought about it for a while, is self-sabotage. We t after we're like sort of successful at something, we tend to, to want to balance that success out by sabotaging ourselves in some sense. We kind of want to do something stupid afterwards that sort of makes us feel bad about ourselves. And I think this is kind of like our psyche seeks homeostasis. If it is too experiencing too much of an extreme on one side, it'll guide you unconsciously to find something that will balance it out again. So if you're super successful and you have all this joy and you know, you're in the state of jubilation, you'll try to sabotage yourself frequently, yeah. Now, the question is, well, what's this, what's this wooden post and what is the pendulum swing? Because these are two key factors that need to be incorporated or need to be sort of distinguished. The key here is, the pendulum will always swing. So you'll always be happy and you'll always be sad from time to time. But that, to me, that, that sort of indicates, well, then life is just always this sort of randomness, this random like left and right, moving forwards and backwards. But it's not that. Depending on where your post is, the wooden post that's swinging the pendulum, that makes the difference. The pendulum will swing, but where it swings, as in, in what area will it swing left to right? Because the post can be planted in different places. And that's the key. We need to move the post to something good. Or else we're always volatile. We'll always just be in the same swinging left and right. And I think... The key here is you need to develop your mind yourself to reach a stable new level of wisdom peace. That means moving the post somewhere better. Just trying to get access of physical manifestations that are supposed to bring you pleasure or make you feel good represent swinging the pendulum. You'll feel good, but you'll feel bad afterwards again. And you'll feel empty again afterwards. So it's like we're trying to find things that make us feel good by swinging the pendulum. And these, th these are external things. These are things that are in our environment, like the house we live in, the car we drive, the clothes we wear, the people we hang out with. These are just, this is just pushing the pendulum, but the post never moves. And you'll always be in the same area swinging back and forth. But the key to peace in life and balance 
is to move the post and the moving the post lies within the individual. The individual is the unit of the post. So the key here for society also is the pendulum will be swing, but you'll stabilize the group and you'll prevent it from tipping into an extreme by grounding it, the, 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 by, grounding, by grounding the individual in a stable state in which the pendulum doesn't have to swing, the pendulum stands still and it is less volatile. It's kind of stable and peaceful with equanimity. So we need to, yeah, do it. Oh, that, that's awesome, that's awesome. The core lies within the individual. So in conclusion, the tick occurs and the tock will follow. The pendulum swings left and right. And whenever we're moving the pendulum, we're essentially trying to get access to feeling good through buying something or experiencing something cool. But the pendulum is always swinging back again because it is always in balance. But what, and, and that's always gonna occur. When, it, when, the, when the pendulum swings forwards, you can anticipate it'll swing back again with 100% get, with, with certainty. So the question is, well, how do we find a way of life with this post that holds the pendulum which is swinging? That is good. Whatever that means, what is, what is good? I think it is move the pendulum to a place where the post that holds the pendulum in a place where it doesn't need to swing the pendulum and the pendulum does not seek happiness. It simply is and stands still because the fulfillment and the meaning is to be present in the standing still. It is in the present moment. It is in the now. It is in the realization that you are healthy, your lungs are working, your limbs are working, your mind is somewhat working, and that's maybe all you need to be stable and peaceful. So please leave a comment below whether you think there are any other examples of how the pendulum swings in life and how the tick occurs and the tock will follow with certainty. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to learn more about self-development, dating, union psychology, and how to reduce suffering in life. Thank you for listening.